Hi everyone, this lesson is on non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and infections. So we're going to talk about some new research that has shown recently that there is increased risk for having severe infections if you have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Before we talk about that research, let's talk about what non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is. So non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is a liver disease that is not caused by ethanol use or not caused by alcohol consumption. And it's characterized by fatty infiltration of the liver. And the etiology as to why this condition occurs is insulin resistance. So insulin resistance leads to fatty infiltration into the liver. And it's also highly associated with metabolic syndrome. Signs and symptoms of having this include it being asymptomatic. So many patients are asymptomatic, meaning that they have no symptoms at all. And in patients who do have symptoms of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, often the symptoms are going to be vague, meaning that they don't really have any specific symptoms. These can include malaise, just feeling generally unwell, fatigue, a right upper quadrant, dull discomfort. So if we were to look directly on the patient, this is the right side of the patient, and this is the right upper quadrant where the liver is located. And some patients will describe having a dull discomfort in this location. Other patients can have nausea, and there can be some mild weight loss as well. But the topic of this lesson is that there is new evidence indicating non-alcoholic fatty liver disease increases the risk of severe infections. And we're going to talk about that research. And we're also talk about the types of infections that are more likely to occur if you have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So all the evidence we're going to talk about comes from the article entitled Risk of Severe Infection in Patients with Biopsy Proven Non-Alcoholic Fatty Liver Disease, a Population-Based Cohort Study. And this was published in May of 2023 in the journal Clinical Gastroenterology and Hepatology. Now, before we talk about the research, it's important to talk about the fact that the liver contains a lot of important immune cells. Some of these include natural killer cells, Kupfer cells, and other neutrophils. But the problem in non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is that it is known to affect these immune cells and the functioning of these immune cells. So having non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, so all this fatty infiltration in the liver can lead to reduced or decreased hepatic natural killer cell activity. It can also lead to impaired functioning of Kupfer cells. So Kupfer cells are these immune cells in the liver that can help other immune cells with bacterial infections and other infections. And it also reduces the functioning of neutrophils that reside in the liver as well. So it has been known that fatty infiltration can affect the functioning of these immune cells in the liver. But the researchers in this study actually looked a bit further to see how this affects the risk for having certain infections, particularly severe infections that require hospitalization. So this study was a population-based cohort study in Sweden that looked at patients who had a histologically confirmed non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Roughly, they looked at 12,000 patients and they assessed data on these patients for almost approximately 50 years. And they also stratified these non-alcoholic fatty liver disease patients into different categories of severity of the condition and also looked at their risk of having severe infections. We'll talk about this a bit later on. And they also matched these non-alcoholic fatty liver disease patients with a population of healthy comparators on the basis of age, sex, calendar year, and county. And what they used was the Swedish National Registers, so this is their health database, and they looked at whether or not patients who had non-alcoholic fatty liver disease were at a higher risk for having severe infections requiring hospitalization. And what they found was that indeed among patients with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, within a course of 20 years, these patients did have a higher risk of having a severe infection requiring hospitalization, 32.3 per 1,000 person years. And person years is a unit of measure to account for the number of people that have been tracked for a certain number of years. So it's actually number of persons times number of years. And this was in contrast to the healthy comparator group where this group had 17 severe infections per 1,000 person years. Additionally, the 20-year cumulative incidence rate for severe infection was 45% for patients who had non-alcoholic fatty liver disease compared with 27.8% among the population comparator group. So this resulted in an absolute risk difference of 17.3%. And this equaled one extra severe incident of infection in every six patients with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So it was shown that non-alcoholic fatty liver disease patients had a higher risk for having severe infection requiring hospitalization, but what kinds of infections were they more likely to experience? They're more likely to experience most commonly 
a respiratory tract infection, and some other ones included urogenital tract infections. They were also at a higher risk for having sepsis as well, and they were also at a higher risk for having gastrointestinal infections as well. So they had a higher incidence of respiratory infections, a higher incidence of urogenital tract infections, and a higher incidence of sepsis along with some other types of infections like gastrointestinal infections. And again, they're severe enough that they require hospitalization. So this doesn't look at whether or not they may actually be having more infections outside of hospital. So again, this is significant because these infections are severe enough to require hospitalization. So authors also looked at how the severity of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and related conditions affects the risk of having a severe infection. So in non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is actually the first step in a progression of severity of this particular condition. So at first we get this fatty infiltration, which leads to non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. But then over time, that fatty infiltration can lead to inflammation, which is known as NASH or non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. And then that inflammation can lead to damage to liver cells. And this can lead to fibrosis or scarring of the liver. So up to this point, we can have a reversal of this condition, but at some point, there's so much scar tissue that the liver cells are not able to regenerate. And this leads to a NASH with cirrhosis or a cirrhosis due to non-alcoholic fatty liver disease or non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. And then these patients are going to be at a higher risk for having cancer that can occur. So a hepatocellular carcinoma. So this is the progression of severity of the non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and related conditions. And authors also found that with increasing severity, of this condition, there was an increasing prevalence of severe infections, which was noted here, simple steatosis, which is just the first stage of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, just the presence of fat. Compared to patients with NASH, there's a higher overall risk for severe infections in the NASH group. And then when we look further into the more severe stages, the stages with non-serotic fibrosis and cirrhosis were at an even higher risk of severe infections. So again, increasing severity of the condition leads to increasing prevalence of severe infections. And then here are some other data points as well. Simple steatosis, NASH without fibrosis, non-serotic fibrosis, and cirrhosis. And you can see that the incident rates increase in each group. So this is going to be important as well. Now it's also known that metabolic syndrome is highly associated with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. And metabolic syndrome itself increases the risk of having more infections and more severe infections. So the question then becomes, does the increased risk that occurs with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, is it simply due to a patient also having metabolic syndrome? But that doesn't seem to be the case as was noted that having non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is its own risk factor for having more infections or more severe infections. So having Metabolic syndrome increases your risk for having more severe infections, but having non-alcoholic fatty liver disease or one of those related non-alcoholic fatty liver disease conditions increases your risk even more. And this is all going to be very, very important because the incidence of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is actually increasing worldwide. It's actually the most common chronic liver disease in the world right now. And because it's so highly associated with obesity, metabolic syndrome, insulin resistance, the increasing rates of obesity and diabetes that is occurring worldwide is also going to lead to increased rates of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease over time as well. So non-alcoholic fatty liver disease has increased in prevalence in the last several decades, and it's likely to even continue further out into the future. And it's also important to point out that one out of four people that have a healthy or normal weight also have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease as well. So this is a very common condition. So because of all of this, what can we do to actually reduce our risk for having non-alcoholic fatty liver disease or help reverse non-alcoholic fatty liver disease that is already present? One of them is going to be weight loss. So the goal is to lose at least 10% of your weight. Gradual weight loss is going to be important, 0.5 to 1 kilogram per week. If you lose weight too quickly, you can actually worsen the non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Another way we can reduce our risk is exercise. So aerobic exercises and resistance training is going to be important. And then our dietary consumption is going to be important, not only for helping lose weight, but also certain things that we consume can actually help reduce the risk of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Coffee consumption is one of them. Coffee consumption is associated with a reduced non-alcoholic fatty liver disease prevalence and severity. And 
in those studies that actually looked at it, three cups per day was noted to be beneficial. And then having a low choline intake is also significantly associated with increased prevalence of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. We can get choline in eggs. So eating eggs may help us reduce our prevalence of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. If you want more information on what you can do to reduce your risk or reverse a non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, please check out my full lesson on that topic. And if you found this lesson helpful, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Thanks so much for watching and hope to see you next time.